Hello and welcome to 50 MENA Leaders with me, Laura Buckwell, where we sit down with a host of regional business pioneers who are spearheading change around the world and at the same time celebrating excellence in innovation that's emerging from the Middle East and North Africa region. Today, I'm sitting down with Hussein Frazier, who is the Regional General Manager of Snap Inc. in the MENA region, one of the world's leading tech companies. We will be discussing how Snap brings value to consumers, businesses, and society today, including the engagement scene within Snap's MENA community, and why Saudi continues to be one of their biggest markets globally all while underscoring the company's unprecedented leadership in AR. Hussein Frazier, thank you so much for having us here. Your magnificent offices here in Dubai Media City at Snap Inc. It's really great to have you with us. Tell us a little bit about the company and what exactly it is that you do. Well, Snap Inc. is a technology company that focuses a lot on creating technologies that enhances people's relationships with a lot of focus on the relationships between people and their friends and family, and as well how the camera and augmented reality could play a big role in creating those experiences. The most popular service of Snap Inc. you would know about probably is Snapchat. Before Snapchat, we were very limited in the way we communicate together. It was just text. We really believe that visual communication adds a lot of emotions and value to the way we communicate. So you've been with the company for, for seven years now. So tell us a little bit about how your sort of leadership style has evolved throughout that time from when you first started. When I look at evolution of leadership and how we as leaders are evolving now as we speak, it is important to acknowledge the evolution in the relationship between companies and employees. Uh, a generation before us, that relationship was mostly transactional. And by time, this relationship has evolved into more of a partnership. And that partnership, for it to work, you had to share the same values with the company that you're working for. You have to actually share the same vision of what kind of impact you want to do from that business. And that evolution has forced an evolution in leadership as well. Leaders are now enablers of cultures and leaders are in charge now of creating platforms that allow people to be creative, innovative, and allow them to execute uh, with excellence. And that took away from the leader that idea of I have to come up with something creative and a plan and, and made it more the responsibility of the wider um, environment in a collaborative way. So I really believe in the role of the leader to create culture, enable teams to be creative, innovative, and execute well, and as well create a healthy environment that we all could enjoy, and as well um, kind of innovate and, and, and create the impact that we want to create. I think now in, in our world, we're really lucky to live in a world where culture is becoming a key focus, in addition or complementary to delivering results. Real focus on diversity, inclusion, equal opportunities. Uh, I think a leader in this world is lucky because this is the time where finally those topics are becoming serious and it forces us as leadership to understand uh, what needs to happen and how um, those behaviors drive business results. Tell us a little bit more about your role as general manager and what sort of led you into that as well? I graduated in computer science and I joined a startup and this startup grew massively um, to be acquired later by Yahoo and where I joined Yahoo to lead their commercial team and then lead the whole team. Our key responsibility at that time was to really bring Yahoo as a global company and really create a local experience uh, through content, through product or developers, and as well connect with our partner ecosystem. It feels to me like this whole journey from the moment I graduated till I, I was with Yahoo, it was prepping me for the opportunity at Snap. Um, I feel very lucky that I was able to join such a fun uh, company, such a fun product where I really align with the values that we share, being kind, being smart, creative, and be employee number one. So you're able to actually bring all your experience, your mistakes and opportunities to build a new team from scratch. And it's been an amazing journey. Snap is really popular here and loved that allowed us to build a really strong team that I'm so proud of and a culture that we really enjoy. And as well, the output of that, as I said, is a great product, great partnerships that we've been able to create in the last seven years. 
Well, of course, Snap Inc. is very much a global company. Tell us a little bit more about how this region differs from others. Is there much of a difference? We have a team here in Dubai um, and we have a team in Saudi. Uh, we announced early this year that we're going to have a creator studio in Saudi as well to support our creator uh, community there. It's going to be in um, Jack's district in Al Daraya and Riyadh. As well, we announced a couple months ago that we're going to have a presence in Qatar uh, to serve our partnership ecosystem. Um, in, in Qatar. Uh, and, and when you look at the community here, uh, it's one of the most engaged um, globally in, in the GCC market specifically. In Saudi, for example, we have more than 20 million people that uses the platform every month. If you look at the demographic between 13 and 34 in Saudi, we reach more than 90% of that demographic. In UAE, where we are now, one out of three people between 18 and 34 use Snapchat. Even when you look at um, where our focus is, which is augmented reality, you see a lot of adoption here and, and, and AR is adding a lot of value already to people's daily lives. More than 85% of people in MENA now use AR every day on Snapchat. And that's a testament to the value that we bring to our community. And this is a really exciting opportunity for us that we look forward to for the future. Saudi Arabia has the highest adoption rate of Snapchat in, in the entire region. So tell us a little bit more about why that is. If you look at how Snapchat is designed, uh, we're actually designed to be different. We're designed to be the antidote to social media. At that time, social media put so much pressure on people to be perfect or to just gain popularity. And then when we designed the platform, privacy and safety were at the core of the DNA on how we designed uh, Snapchat. We felt there's a need for people to just be themselves. But then there's the focus on how we approach content. Creators just love the camera on Snapchat and they use it to really create amazing content uh, for their audiences. As well, we really um, help publishers to create content on Snapchat in a snappy way to communicate with a large audience um, in, in the region. And I think this recipe played a big role in um, making us a leader in, in Saudi Arabia. What exactly are the sectors that are being disrupted by augmented reality today? Well, we've seen it in the beginning with entertainment, but we're seeing really great use cases in doing good just using AR to drive donations, to drive value and charity work uh, for communities. We've seen it help a lot in culture, art and film and entertainment. We've seen it doing really well with destinations and tourism in terms of bringing tourism and destination experiences to people uh, outside of those destinations. If you're in Europe in the cold weather, uh, what's better than AR in putting you in Dubai where the beaches are, where the sun is rising and the weather is amazing. And we've seen those disrupting those industries and as well creating opportunities for businesses to enhance and add more experiences to engage with their consumers and more importantly, creating business impact. So as we move into this new era of Web3, what exactly is the difference then between augmented reality and the metaverse? Philosophically, we really believe reality is the most compelling but healthy uh, starting point for creating computing platforms. This is where our focus, even before the metaverse, has been on AR to create that computing layer over our reality to make it better, to make it happier, to make it healthier. AR has been an innovation area for Snap in the last 10 years. We have a very clear leadership in that area. VR has a lot of value, um, but we just believe that it always has to anchor on improving reality. Well, you touched on the Creator Studio over in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Tell us a little bit more about that. And what else are you prioritizing at the moment? Creators in Saudi are amongst the most vibrant, most engaged and creative creators in the world. And they are a major driver for engagement in Saudi Arabia. So the Creator Studio is designed to have a platform that allows us to support creators in learning augmented reality and how augmented reality could impact the way they create content and how ultimately this could add a new layer of experience and engagement and a new massive opportunity to create new businesses and commercial models that allows them to grow their businesses there. So my final question is, what sort of key pieces of advice can you give to businesses and creators that might be watching this now that are looking specifically to get into this space? 
So if you look at how technology started disrupting behaviors and businesses 20 years ago, and you look at that journey since then, it is very clear that we've seen major transformation moments that happened through that journey. And examples of this uh, is when internet disrupted the way we create content, social media, and then video. And if you look at, the, at businesses um, during those moments, it was businesses who adopted those transformational changes early on, understood those changes, and integrated them in their business are the ones who created leadership, thrived, and as well were ready for the future. We really believe that AR is one of those peak moments, and we believe it's happening now. More than 250 million people use AR on Snapchat every day now. So this is the time where businesses has to come in and understand it, acknowledge it, and we really can help them build those capabilities to integrate it within their uh, experiences and their products and in the way they, um, they grow their businesses in the near future.